Irish brother Ken and Lennon was. And what's going to be as difficult to more as just know? La vida es más difícil no cuando no habla inglés. Mas mahirap para sa kanila mas tumira sa America kapag hindi sila marunong magsalita ng Ingles. So what we just witnessed is what an ESL student goes through daily as they struggle just to understand what is happening in their classroom and on the street if someone asks them, asks them for directions. Um, they really can't understand anything. It's quite difficult. Great. So good afternoon. We are the English as a Second Language group of English 2010. I'm Adrian. I'm Sherry. I'm Solomon. I'm Milan. So we chose to work with the ESL community, um, in, or English as a Second Language, because we learned that there was a great need for help or volunteers in this community, especially here at our school in Salt Lake Community College. And so we just wanted to um, share our knowledge of the English language as a means to help out. Basically, we saw a lot of uh, our classmates leaving campus and rushing into the greater community where there is a lot of need. We wondered if there was also some need maybe here on campus that where they could also uh, use some help, and if so, we'd like to, to be the group that stays here. Um, all of us have some experience with English as a second language. Um, me personally, I came to the States as a refugee from Eastern Europe, and I didn't speak any English at all when I arrived here. So I went through the ESL program, and I know how hard it is when I'm trying to learn a new language. And I just wanted to offer them help to make it a little bit easier for the students. That we walk by every day in our hallways in our college and we don't even notice. My daughter in law is Argentine and I witnessed her struggles as she tried to gain proficiency in the English language, which is one of the reasons that I wanted to help serve in that area. So, throughout the semester, we worked with the ESL 1010 and 1020 class of Miss Kathy McIntyre. And in that class, we would um, sit with the students when they get in groups. Um, when they read things aloud and just make sure they're pronouncing everything correctly and, and if they have any questions we just answer them to the best of our ability and we would also um, do writing workshops with the students and we would just try to revise their papers as much as we can. We would give dictation, they would write out the sentences as we gave them to them. We also had experiences giving them spelling lists and as she mentioned sitting in round robin reading groups and listening as they read as well. A lot of the students struggle a lot with things like there and there, when it's two different meanings and spelled differently. And so there's always a lot more uh, focus that they can use, a lot more additional um, ideas. So. The way that Kathy's class was set up, they had a class from 9 in the morning until about 10.30 a.m., then they had a half hour break that was in between uh, 10.30 to 11. And during that break time, a lot of them had help uh, questions and they needed help with uh, filling out simple paperwork for maybe their children or even with their financial stuff that that they needed done for the school. Another thing that they needed was a lot of the students there, they had jobs outside of um, their school and they were working and uh, they needed help, they didn't understand the slang language and some of the words like, oh is this a good word, is that a word, bad word. A few times like a, stu a few students I had to explain to the word beach can be used as two different things. The water, it's thing by it's uh, water and sand. It can be used inappropriately. And they, some of the stuff that they just didn't understand, the events were every day, that they kind of didn't feel comfortable asking their teacher. But as we talked with them and during their break time, the time we spent with them, they felt comfortable talking to us because we were about their same age group and um, they seen us as friends instead of instructors. Okay, and so working with the students this closely, we were able to identify some of the problems which Sherry will um, talk about. In working with the students, we noticed that there was definitely some insecurity and some fear to answer, to, to ask questions. We found a research paper at Eboy documented by Marilyn Lewis and Heil Reinders. The title of it was Using Student-Centered Learned Methods with Teacher-Centered Students. Uh, they identified that there are several different things that are to create problems for ESL students within the classroom setting. Uh -huh. Again, they are insecure. They come from different learning styles. Some of them learn visually. Some of them are more spatial, kinetic, auditory oriented. So there are many different things that factor into the way people learn. There's also the problem. ESL students often have previous educational experience. Some of them may have already completed the four-year degree and just need to learn English. Others may have no experience whatsoever. And 
This is a challenge if they're used to a very different class structure or class format compared to what they will find here. Uh, many of them might be scared to ask questions as uh, they're not used to, not from a, from a system or an educational system where they can ask questions and they come here and it, uh, it's difficult for them. So just, um, just like what he mentioned, the foreign class structure can um, contribute to this because class structure can differ from country to country. Um, in my experience, I went to school in the Philippines and back home, um, it's all the class structure is very formal, it can be very strict. For example, when the teacher comes in, all the students are supposed to stand up and greet the teacher and the only time we can sit back down is when the teacher greets us back. And so, um, it's very, it, it does take some getting used to because here it's not, it's definitely not like that. And so that can contribute to the fear, to that fear of asking questions in class. The way that Kathy's class was structured, there was uh, students there from uh, different nationalities, background, ethical, and different ethnicities. And personally, for me, when I came to the States, I came from a school that I went to that was predominantly uh, white students, and they were pretty much all the same nationality and race. But in Kathy's class, um, there were students from Africa, there were students from uh, Asia, there were students from Europe, South America, and they felt a little uncomfortable uh, communicating with each other because they didn't know that much about other people's culture, and they felt uncomfortable not wanting to offend anybody or not knowing what kind of response they're going to get back when they socialize with their fellow peers. The results of these problems is that there is wasted class time, there are low test scores, there's a lack of preparation sometimes within the homework structure and limited understanding of what the teacher is actually saying. All of these things require further clarification. So we then decided how do we address these problems that we're seeing. I think these are really problems not only inside of the second language, a lot of them are general education problems. But uh, what we decided was what if we created a study group where students would meet weekly, probably for one hour, outside of class time, and it would not be a structure, it would just be students meeting together with one fluent English speaker who could kind of talk to them and make sure um, that they're not giving each other false information. The idea is that I think students, and we, just, we came to the conclusion also based on our research, that students learn best when they regurgitate what they, what they process. So they don't just take in information, but then they also use it, they, they teach each other. And the idea with this is that Rather than sitting in just a classroom, scared to ask questions, and then try to go home and do the homework, they could meet outside of class time and, uh, and ask each other questions and explain things to each other, concepts. And we want a fluent English speaker, a volunteer, to be present uh, because in case someone thinks they understand but doesn't, and then gives the false explanation, someone who would understand that can jump in and say, no, actually, it might be this. And so more of a, a less, for, uh, like, no, not really structured, but still, just where they kind of help each other with the homework and uh, spend time. Right now, already, a uh, one-on-one -on -one, uh, peer group exists in the ESL labs. But we thought that uh, having a, a, like a group, study group more, where they're really with other students rather than with just a tutor could also be beneficial. Um, the benefit would mostly benefit the ESL students. It would, uh assist them with homework question and understanding of their assignments because there was a couple of times we came into the classroom and one of the things that they did is uh, Kathy would assign them a thing they had to read and then the next day they would have to write down what they read and um, the students, there was a few of them that would write down exactly the sentence and the spelling and everything would be right and when you ask them about it they wouldn't understand what the sentence meant so they know the words they know how to write them down, but they don't understand the meaning of the stuff. And they're like, oh, we just spent a couple hours going over and over and over and over this, this stuff, just so we remember it, so we would do good on the test. And with our study group, it would be easier to help them understand the meaning of what their words are. Because we did that in a few times, and if they have somebody to understand it to them, it is very beneficial and it helps them out a lot. The other thing, it would be more efficient class time, just like in any class. There are some students that are advanced, there are some students that are behind. Um, the students that are behind are taking up a lot of class time in the Gathis class where they're asking questions, while the advanced students, their time is being wasted there, and when they could be doing uh, learning new material and improving their English skills. It would encourage more English conversations, because a lot of these students, when they go to work, 
their jobs don't require them to do uh, to have a lot of communicating between their co-workers. When they go home, they're there with their families. They don't uh, encounter English conversations that much. If they were in the study group with the tutor, they would encourage um, English conversations in English, so their skills would get better with the, in English. And it would also increase the likelihood of students succeeding because the few students that we worked with, um, after we helped them, they got they understood the stuff. And even the one word they understood from the sentence that we told them, the, when the next sentence had it in there, they would get a better understanding of what that sentence meant. Um, the cost, it would be cost effective. We would want these, uh, Solid, Solid Community College to provide one classroom once a week for the beginning and also a volunteer. And the volunteer could be a student from a service learning uh, class like we were helping out the ESL and the rest of the service learning students were here. Um, we can find somebody from the ESL lab, a tutor from up there that could help them in a group environment where they could work with their homework and questions they have regarding their uh, homework. Uh, somebody from tutors in training or somebody from the greater community and my group mate here, Sherry, will talk to you guys about that. Well, I know it's not evident, but I'm a non-traditional student, okay? <laughs> and so I have had the opportunity of visiting. I don't hang out there, but I do visit occasionally. Some of the local senior centers. I have noticed that on their volunteer post boards, they've got people requesting volunteers to help with literacy programs for students and various other things. It would be a very easy thing to do to post a, for a volunteer to work here on the, the campus, either at this campus or the south campus, where they have uh, students who are ASL students to serve in a volunteer position within the classroom just once a week to help guide the students so that they stayed speaking English. Does that make sense? So they continued speaking English, and that's it. So uh, some experiences that we take out of this. Um, I would say none of us would disagree. It was very beneficial in a service learning situation. And in this one in particular, uh, I think just we were in an English class. And I think when we uh, explained English concepts or talked about that, it helped clarify it for us, ourselves, quite a lot as well. Um, and so our writing definitely improved from that. But also just hearing some of the stories. A lot of these students have been through so much. And they face such difficulty and hardship. And uh, hearing these stories and then that they have the strength to pick themselves up and keep trying in life, keep trying to build a new, that's really encouraging and really uh, moving. And then there's so many people who when they see these, or when they experience horrific events, they kind of shut down, they go into their shell, and I'd say everyone does for a time period, but some of these students, they find a way to come out of that and to move forward. And that was very, uh, very inspiring, very touching, so. Um, me, personally, it's uh, something to reflect back on. It's like a living experience that I went through through these students, and the other thing is, uh, it didn't change me that much, but the thing is there's a student in this class that was from a country that was bordering mine, and the countries have been in war for hundreds of years, and in any other setting or any other different time, we would have never communicated or socialized, but in uh, Kathy's class, the girl that was in that class, she was actually really nice, and we got along perfectly fine, and we worked, I helped her out as much as I could with her English, and we, I wouldn't say we became friends, but the thing, yesterday was the last time we volunteered in that class this semester, uh, before their class was over, and when she left there, she thanked me and shook my hand, it was something that was like, you know, you know, everybody's has a nice side to them, don't, don't judge people by where they're from or, you know, what happened previously. Um, so it was interesting because I came into the service learning into this class thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to teach them a bit in, a bit of English, and so I was going to be the teacher, and they were going to be sort of my students, but now it turns out it was the other way around, like, they were my teachers, and I was their student, because I learned so much from this experience, and I love, I love working with them, and as Saul said, it's very inspiring how hard they work in this class, because for them, they want to um, attain, they, they want to, they want a better life, and they know, they understand that, you know, to get through this class, they need, they need that, and um, another thing was um, just hearing, there's like what he said, just hearing their stories um, of where they came from and what they've been through to get here, um, some of them have been through, some of them are refugees, and they've been through war and all that, and to me, it's just, 
if I if I were in their shoes, I don't know if I could. It would. It's hard to imagine being in their position, but seeing how they still live, they still strive to work hard is in fact very inspiring, and I really love this experience. <laughs> I've learned to really admire the persistence and the tenacity of these students. One girl in particular works all night as a CNA in a nursing home. She comes directly from work to the ESL class. Then she goes home and picks up her kids from daycare. She's got how many children does Jane have? She has three children. They're all very young. She picks them up. She takes them home. She helps them with their homework. She feeds them supper. She somehow manages to cram in a little bit of sleep and a little bit of study time. Goes back to work and does it all over again. I don't know how she manages. You know, I really and truly admire what these students do in their lives. It really puts my problems into perspective. I have an admiration and an appreciation for the challenges that they face. And it's been a real experience, a wonderful experience working with them. Right, so in conclusion, um, uh, we think with the, if this, uh, with the study group, ESL students have hopefully a better chance of uh, advancing academically. And students will develop more real-world conversation skills than they can just the in the classroom. Um, if they're just going to the classroom speaking English, going home speaking another language, maybe speaking Spanish at their place of work, of employment, uh, any, any chance of speaking English is going to improve then. And it would also, there's going to be a cultural exchange and interchange of ideas. By that I mean everybody gains. And with that, really, we as the volunteers gain a, a lot. And so it's, uh, it's definitely... And I would like to encourage everybody who hasn't ever been down to the Living Traditions Festival in May. Uh, it's held toward the end of the month. It's always down at the City County Building. It's a wonderful experience where you can experience some of the culture of the different countries where we have students right here on the campus from. in school in more years than I'm going to admit to. <laughs> and it helped me to start thinking in terms of what an education really means to me. By being able to see these students working as hard as they were to gain that education. And they cover some really difficult subjects in those ESL classes. Uh, it helped me to stay focused on thinking in terms of what does my audience want? What am I going to be doing with this information? How am I going to be incorporating it into my life and my, my writing assignments later? And how did you? Um, the way... Go for it. <laughs> the way I do it is most of the assignments that we have to write, we just write on what's academically required of us without, without much emotion into the papers. And it makes you think of how you're going to, like, the stuff that you experience with these students, how it makes you feel, you put that in your writing to which I wouldn't do in any other classes. I would say it just really deepens our reflection, you know, what you're saying. But we're able to really see things clearer. And uh, a lot of times when you're thinking about writing, you start maybe, there's this idea, okay, I have to sort of meet these points, and I'm just going to go through, and there's sort of like, write some stuff. But if you're really thinking, if you're really feeling like what they're going through, and then you can write that, I think it's a lot more powerful too, with, with regards to English class, right? So. Yeah, and putting, putting it into words, it just makes you realize even more like what you're getting out from this service learning experience. Um, so yeah. I'm actually planning on getting a, a degree as a teacher of English as a second language. So I had sort of a twofold purpose in doing this. Uh, to increase my understanding of what my daughter-in-law and various other people that I know are going through. But also because a few years back, I had the experience within a church setting of teaching English to some people as a second language. And you just, we find that we're more alike than we are different. And we really, prejudice has no, ways, no place in this world. We need to, I'm sorry, it's a soapbox of mine, but we need to get rid of it. <laughs> so, uh, and I was able to use some of the things, some of the things that I've learned, obviously not how to slow down when I speak, 
But some of the things that I've learned in doing my final project for my CIS class as well. So. CIS is? Uh, oh, pardon me, Computer Information Systems. You know, Microsoft Office to be specific. <laughs> I don't want to put Liz on the spot, and I know the ladies aren't here yet, but from a faculty perspective, if you could talk about the, the difference in writing that you can notice when students do sort of science projects or meeting their learning outcomes from the professor's perspective. I see more authentic engagement. It's not that they're just going through the steps, that they're just um, writing what they think they need to write that will meet the requirements. I see them actually, um, I don't know, I think the, one of the magical things about writing is that it's alive. If it's good writing, it lives, you know, Shakespeare lives, great writers live forever. And so many student papers are flat and disengaged. And I was at a point where I really didn't think I could go on teaching because I was so tired of getting, knowing that they were writing what they thought I wanted to hear. And what I've seen since I've been teaching, just redesigned the curriculum around their service work, proposals and reflections, and they each need to see a movie or read a book that has to do with the subject they're studying, the real authentic research they do, um, writing annotated bibliographies, that they could become informed, they become engaged, they become part of the conversation, not just students looking in on it, and it's been, um, it's so much work that every semester I wonder why I keep doing it, but then <laughs> at the end of the semester, they, they get it, they really, I, I think it's authentic, more authentic learning, um, authentic writing, and it comes through in their writing. I would love to share their final reflections with you, they're pretty amazing. And yes, if I have an opportunity, I'll probably do another service learning class. <laughs> <laughs> Took the words right out of that. <laughs>